Tamil Nadu, the true income of the property, as I said, is about 6,000 crore rupees. Imagine 6,000 crore rupees a year. I can build 10 schools at 50 crores each school in a year. And how much does it cost? 500 crores. How much I am left with? 5,500 crores. I gave scholarships of 50,000 rupees to 100,000 students, 1 lakh students. How much does it cost? 500 crores. I still have 5,000 crores. 50,000 rupees medical aid to 100,000 deserving Hindus. 500 crores. I still have 4,500 crores. I spend 250 crores to conserve my temples, which are in need of preservation. 4,250 crores is still with me. I built five colleges, one medical college, one veterinary college, one dental medicine, 250 crores each. Still I have 3,000 crores or 3,500 crores. I am losing maths here. So that's the power if you run temples properly instead of government babus running them and receiving the difference between the fair rent or part of the fair rent and the money is actually charged under the table. Now nobody is received under the table. They receive it openly above the table. They probably ask them to even deposit in their accounts. We will be running patashalas, Veda Patashala, Agama Patashala, Goshalas, 40,000 temples in Tamil Nadu, 40,000 in Andhra, similarly in um, Karnataka, not that many in um, Kerala, but still. Supposing we have two desi cows for each temple, that will be like 200,000 desi cows. Suddenly there will be a demand for desi cows. Suddenly there will be an increase in the A2 milk and people will be benefited. The biggest beneficiary would be farmers because a fraud called fertilizer subsidy will be done away with, with our Panchakavya. Government spends 60,000, 70,000 crores on fertilizer subsidy. It's a fraud, totally unnecessary and something that poisons our lands and our vegetables and our crops. Again, art, paintings, and all this connected with the temple, the same music, dance. Tiruvaru temple has ancient drum instruments, five of them today, ancient, found no, no other temples. There is one person left to play one of them, of the five instruments. One instrument can be played by only one of them and he does not have a son, he has a daughter today and he is teaching his daughter and the temple tells we won't appoint the daughter. No. <laughs> so, does it have to go with this generation if we allow the government? Yes. Then the temple jewels. We draw inspiration from temple jewels. The antique jewelry, the silver works, the vessels, the plates, the ornaments. Think about anything, anything that is really, really fine. Today you have to symbolize India, not even Hinduism, India. You have only two icons to do it. One is Om, another one is Nataraja. The moment you put that icon, you symbolize the Vedic Indic culture then we can help Sanskrit come back because we run our schools, we can teach children at least till 5th standard or 7th standard spoken Sanskrit to read and write Sanskrit, Shastras, regional knowledges, we can publish our Itihasas, Mahabharatas for adults, for children, our Bhakti uh, Dusing, Purandar Dasa Kirtanas, Tevaram, Tiruvasakam, Tirukkural in various languages. With all with temple money, we don't have to bet anybody anything. Our money is being refused to us to do dharmic things. So, Puja Swami Dayanasaswari said, getting back our temples is Rishi Rana. 
the debt we owe our rishis because our rishis told us how to build temples and how to run them. Even today we have Parashurama Paddhati in Kerala. What he, uh, here also, excellent. And we owe it to our past, you know, Sri Raja Raja Chora, Raja Indra Chora, Vijayanara Kingdom, Chatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. We owe it to them. And we should leave a better place, better temples, better system for our children.